But I start then with Philip Webb because I hope in this case uh, the information is not uh, is not uh, is not wrong. Uh, yeah. So he was uh, he was born on, on the 12th of January. So we are talking about the one who, who is considered the father of the arts and crafts movement in, in, in Great Britain and beyond Great Britain. But uh, usually such um, uh, qualifications are disputable because uh, usually there are a few more than just one, one father. Nevertheless, he was a very important uh, architect in the, in the 19th century in, in England, in, in, in Great Britain. So uh, his full name was Philip Speakman Webb, was an English architect, sometimes called the father of arts and crafts architecture. His use of vernacular architecture demonstrated his commitment to the art of common building, whatever that might mean, the art of common building. But I, I think essentially, uh, at that time, some, some architects intended to, although they were part of the elite of society, they also had social concerns, just like William Morris, and he uh, collaborated with, with William Morris, and the first building you are going to see is the house he built for William Morris, a very important cultural figure in the 19th century in England, and uh, I think uh, is a very special uh, house. But before we arrive at it, let's uh, look at a, a little bit at, at the man, the way he looked like. Uh, he looks like um, an interesting man, uh, an intellectual, an artist, uh, capable of introspection. And um, a, a man, I would say, uh, one should trust. And indeed, his buildings are worthy of attention. Now I'll show some drawings. So again, he was born on the 12th of January. We are now uh, in the, on the 15th, three days later, but still we are, uh, we are paying homage to him in the week, during the week in which he, he was born. Unfortunately, some of these drawings, uh, I couldn't find images with a great resolution, but um, the, the, you know, uh, let's hope a few others are better. Of course, all the drawings were done manually, not like today. But uh, still, uh, we can get a feeling about this man who, who was capable to draw, was capable to count, to add numbers, and to build. And uh, yeah, Philippe Webb uh, is a very important figure in the arts and craft movements, uh, movement and movements, because uh, the movement itself went beyond the limits of uh, Great Britain. Uh, he, he was not afraid at that time to assume also figurative uh, illustrations. Uh, there was a concern with the uh, ornamentation. Um, uh, uh, William Morris, uh, the great William Morris, uh, advocated the ornaments very convincingly. This was Victorian architecture. So it was architecture under Queen Victoria. Now we arrive at this probably his best work, uh, his best known work and also best work, the Red House, which he built in 1859 uh, for his friend, uh, William Morris. And it's, it's possible also William Morris had some, some saying in the design. Uh, anyway, uh, drawing, but this is the building. And what do we see? This is a building that obviously had a, a nostalgia for the Gothic times, uh, William Morris also, and uh, many architects and intellectual figures, Ruskin as well, uh, in the 19th century loved the Gothic. And uh, there was an architect, uh, Augustus Pugin, who advocated very, very, very strongly the neo-Gothic movement. This is, uh, at least in part, has a Gothic feeling, a medieval feeling. But uh, on the other hand, is, 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 uh, is a building in, in the 19th century, uh, Great Britain. Uh, it, is, it has a vernacular feeling about it, but it's more to it actually. And this red house that he built for William Morris is, uh, is a house that uh, 
I think uh, didn't age badly, and, and it, 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 it's a building that still has something to say. It has a personality. is uh, is uh, is a is a genuine creation. Um, and maybe now, under the the attack of the of the climate change, uh, we are forced to reconsider our relationship with the uh, with the natural world, with nature, with organic materials. So maybe some suggestions coming from the Victorian architecture of the 19th century England are worth contemplating. Um, it's an architecture, it's a domestic architecture, but it has a certain monumentality. It's not a banal architecture, it's not a flat architecture. It's, it's uh, celebrating uh, you know, uh, the creative spirit of humankind. And in this case, quite appropriately because the, the, the owner of the house and the beneficiary was uh, a very important uh, designer and cultural figure and polemicist and so on, William Morris. I, I like this architecture. It, it uses organic um, matter, uh, bricks. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a warm architecture. It's not a cold architecture. And uh, uh, you know, it's it's uh, 100, uh, almost 100, uh, you know, 60 years old. It is 160 years old, but uh, it, it, it's a significant uh, house in in the history of architecture. The plans are not so special, so to speak. It is a big house. It 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 in the plans it appears more rectangular than it appears in. Uh, uh, in its elevations. And that's because of the so-called accidents that medieval architecture uh, promoted and accepted. If you look at these plans, with some difficulty, you would expect this look. Uh, because uh, with our mentality of today, we would expect some kind of functionalist, uh, almost white, uh, straightforward uh, rectangular architecture, not something like this, because here the roof is very, very important. The roof is, is monumental, is uh, sculptural, uh, and uh, the chimneys as well. We don't have chimneys any longer, uh, you know, and uh, so again, the, the, the plans could be misleading. Anyway, we go to a next building by him, uh, the Sandroid, uh, in, uh, in this one I think destroyed or not. Uh, some of his buildings had, had been uh, demolished. Unfortunately, this is also a big uh, residence, also a residence that has some touch, some connection with the medieval world. Then um, uh, some, some entries here might not have images because I couldn't find them, but let's see if this one has. It does. It's a, it's a housing complex in uh, in uh, London, and I think it's very convincing and uh, very interesting. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it, it it does say I am. Uh, I was built in the 19th century, but uh, the the rhythm and uh, it is a vigorous project. And uh, it, it does have uh, it does have a force. I, I, I would say architectural force. And uh, you know you have this division on the first floor. On the ground floor you have shops, and above uh, housing units. I think it's very good and very interesting. And it, it is uh, still alive, so to speak. Yes, it is imbued with the history of the 19th century with that, uh, the aesthetics of the Victorian architecture, but it even has a certain modernity because of the, of the strength of the rhythm and, uh, and uh, as such uh, is not uh, less uh, relevant, I would say, than the building on the right, the, the very modern building on the right. So uh, also the, the idea of having communal housing uh, in 19th century is also interesting. Yes, it's not a very large block of flats, but it's a sum of row houses that together form a, a convincing unity or unit. It's not bad. Uh, this is uh, an illustration from, from that time. 
Uh, again, we see the importance of the roof and the importance of the, of the, of the chimneys. Uh, this building without the roof and the chimneys would be, would be uh, much less, I would say. Now another house from 1863, but it was rebuilt in 1937. So it's hard to know. We, uh, I don't know if I have an image, I do. It is uh, Philippe Webb, but uh, it is also the, you know, affected by the architect who rebuilt it. I don't know why it was rebuilt. Maybe it was damaged by fire, I, I don't know. But it is an impressive residence. Nevertheless, the, its scale is far from being modest. Uh, and again, we see here an architecture where the, the, the roof has importance. It seems there was a fire even on this, uh, or unless this, this, this part of the building uh, is, is from the original built by Philippe Webb. There are very interesting uh, buildings uh, that belong to the, what is called Victorian architecture. And uh, the, they had some, some, some brilliant architects. Yes, there was eclecticism. Yes, there was historicism. Uh, but uh, we cannot deny this easily, this architecture. Uh, there wasn't even a yet modernism per se, but there was bigger, there was, uh, there was a rhythm, there was, uh, uh, there was something genuinely powerful in many of the buildings. Sorry about this picture. For this picture, now the interior is, you know, rather so-called conventional, but very comfortable. And the chess table is uh, waiting for two players to play. Now another building in London. Uh, this one is different from the one we previously saw. Uh, it's um, it's uh, an urban building uh, in London that uh, was built then in the 19th century. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, nevertheless, uh, is is uh, is a building by Philippe Webb. A few of his buildings actually uh, uh, were able to to uh, uh, survive in in, in 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 the form that was given to them by by the architect. Uh, I don't know if you can see very well what is going on here. The interior is very, you know, heavily decorated, or I shouldn't say heavily. Uh, it is abundantly decorated, but uh, I, I, I usually the Victorian uh, ornamentation is not actually very heavy. It's it, yes, it covers the whole surface, but uh, it's it's not. Uh, it's not uh, really heavy, I would say. It's uh, it's a kind of ornamentation that has a certain lyricism and a certain femininity, if I can say so. Another house from 1868, again, a large house. Um, it's not really a castle, but it's not really a house either. It's, it's, it's a big villa in a way. The, re the reply of the 19th century to the uh, Partly rural, party well, partly rural uh, villas of Palladio uh, in a different century, of course, the 16th century. So uh, this one, unfortunately, needs, uh, or at least when the picture was taken, uh, was uh, was uh, in need of, of interventions. Some of these buildings, of course, uh, need uh, attention, affection, investments, and uh, let's hope it survived. The bulldozer, another building from 1868, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, building uh, in in the social in the in the in the, uh, the urban fabric of London. Uh, I would say a, uh, a building with 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 uh, with personality, yet integrated in the in the in the front, uh, the the facades. Uh, that are left and right um, they do make uh, uh, perhaps uh, good neighbors for the building by Philippe Webb. Uh, although uh, the building by Philippe Webb is, is not white. <clears throat> Another building, uh, not uh, for some of the buildings, I don't have uh, very satisfying pictures and I, I apologize, but uh, this is a, an introduction to his work 
and if if someone wants to uh, you know further investigate is possible uh, today is possible uh, thanks to, to to the web uh, another large house you see the importance the emphatic importance the rhetorics of the chimneys I mean the, the verticality of them and indeed it is about fire and uh, and uh, uh, many architects uh, expressed uh, uh, through the chimneys, uh, the, 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 you know, I, I almost said the mythology, the symbolism of fire, even Anthony Gaudi, uh, in a different way, maybe more spect, I mean, more spectacular way. But even here, the, the, the verticals of the chimneys are, are, are very important. This house is a national uh, historical uh, landmark in, in Great Britain. Uh, another uh, house, um, this one, um, again, I don't have the greatest pictures, but this one is a little bit different. But by now, I think you have a feeling about what Philippe Webb uh, meant and means <clears throat> for Gables. <clears throat> uh, another house from the so-called arts and crafts movement, where uh, the tri tri triangular uh, parts of the roof play an important part and the chimneys and the redness of the brick walls, which complements so well the greenness of the trees and bushes. So is this dialogue between nature and architecture, between uh, the trees, the bushes, the grass, and uh, the bricks, uh, you know, the ceramic tiles of the roofs and so on. A church from 1878, um, we'll see a few churches today. This is the, this one is by Philip Webb, uh, 19th century, almost 150 years ago, was built. Not very, I would say, not very, you know, creative, not uh, flamboyantly innovative, but uh, you know, a church uh, at that time it wasn't this conception that a church should be extravagantly uh, innovative. Uh, it was still, uh, you know, a field where the architect inspired himself from the past. Klaus House, kind of an interesting, almost avant-garde uh, name. I don't know it is called Clouds, uh, and it doesn't look so uh, avant-garde at all. But uh, anyway, maybe the, the beneficiary, the client, had something to do with his name. Klaus, the biography, biography of a country house. Anyway, another, this time a castle, but I don't think he, he built the whole castle. It's very possible the castle belonged, uh, he existed and he made some interventions. I, I don't know which ones. But uh, in the 19th century in England, there were still some castles, they still are, and some architects still worked on them. But uh, in the 20th century, it's almost impossible to conceive that an architect uh, generates a castle, builds a castle, or even works on a castle. It's a function that uh, almost vanished. Although castles do exist, of course, from other, other, other centuries, other times in various countries. A uh, building from a, um, closer to us, closer to the 20th century, um, we have the British Garden, which is so, Romantic and uh, appealing, uh, which which complements uh, complements again the, the you know the the architecture. Most of the time is reddish because of the brick, and then again nature is green, and so green and red are complementary and the opposite colors, and uh, and uh, there is always some some dynamic. The, the dialectics between red and green. Uh, this, this always functions well. It almost doesn't matter as long as you have red and green together, something uh, rather alive happens. And the triangles also add to the, to the liveliness. Anyway. So Philip Webb, 19th century, Victorian England. Uh, 
this is uh, an office building, uh, but an office building in the in the 19th century. So we shouldn't expect uh, what we would expect these days from an office building. And are interesting these windows that are divided into small uh, little squares or almost squares. Is this traditional, so to speak, feeling that adds a particularity that today we don't have any longer? Uh, there are other uh, elements here, of course, that that would qualify this building as, as belonging to to another time, to another uh, uh, you know understanding about architecture, the aesthetics of architecture. Uh, this is uh, this was destroyed. Uh, uh, again, a, a large residence, a mansion, actually, something in between a mansion and the castle. Um, too bad it was destroyed. Uh, I like these old pictures uh, done with the, you know, rather poor uh, technical means, but they are poetical, they are lyrical, or I, I see them like this with a nostalgic eye. All right, so now we arrive close to the 20th century, still the same kind of architecture, half rural, half urban, uh, half medieval, half something else. I don't know how to call that something else, but the medieval feeling persists. And that's because the 19th century in England, in Great Britain was, was uh, highly uh, marked by a nostalgia for the Middle Ages. Um, a nice picture, a nice photograph, maybe it was made by a, I don't know, a known photographer. I see it is the, the picture is in the collection of the building. Uh, anyway, uh, 